and you're watching Life Intelligence. I'm Valentina and today we're discussing why and how making eye contact builds trust and rapport. From psychology research we know that we perceive people who make eye contact as more transparent, trustworthy, more honest, believable, and we feel safer around them. That's because when we make eye contact with someone, we trigger specific parts of our brain that are responsible for reading social cues, engaging in social interactions, and gauging the environment, gauging the other person on a very instinctual level. Newborn babies learn the skill of reading faces, reading social cues, reading emotions, learning to communicate by looking into the caregiver's eyes before the verbal, before anything. They look up to the eyes of their mother or caregiver, whoever is holding them. When that happens, oxytocin is released in the system and so a bond is made. Oxytocin is the love hormone, is the hormone that causes attachment or <laughs> the effect of the hormone is attachment. So a baby learns to feel safe in the arms of its caregiver by looking at the caregiver's eyes. And by looking at their eyes, they also learn to recognize emotions, they learn how faces move, what things mean. They also learn to communicate as they focus and observe the movements, the sounds, the cadence, the nuances of speech. So we, we are literally um, trained from day one to look into someone's eyes for information, for reinsurance, for love, for connection, for safety. And we keep using that skill as we continue through life. It's, like I said, totally instinctual. No one thinks about, hey, let me look into your eyes unless you're the eye doctor, then you're definitely going to say that. <laughs> so um, we're trained. We're trained to look into other people's eyes. We are signaling, when we look into someone's eyes, we are signaling that connection and we're signaling attention and engagement. So the other person feels seen, they feel heard, they feel understood, they feel safe. Same thing happens when someone's looking in your eyes. You feel seen, you feel heard, you feel understood. So we have made a connection and we, when we make a connection, we can trust each other. If we have no connection, we can't trust each other. Uh, it's uh, generally established that uh, people who look into other people's eyes are conveying more confidence. Well, we also feel better around people who are more confident. They... We can trust them. That was my little doggy. She just jumped off on my couch. <laughs> this is because eye contact is associated with honesty. So if somebody is confident and honest and a little bit assertive, um, they're making a positive, favorable impression. Uh, you can trust them more. They must know what they're talking about. Put a peg in this one though. <laughs> I'll come back to this one a little later. Put a peg in that one. Um, we're also establishing an emotional connection. So that's even more important in intimate relationships, looking into each other's eyes. Come on, everybody knows. Like when you fall in love, you can't stop staring into each other's eyes. You're building that emotional connection. Um, but it's the same thing happens with friends and family. It happens in your job too, um, especially if your job is something related to caring for other people. If you're a doctor or nurse, um, you know, if you're in a position where compassion is important for your job, I guess if you're a building a building and laying masonry, it doesn't matter. But if you're interfacing with uh, clients, 
patients, customers all day long, and you're able to make that emotional connection, they will be loyal customers because emotionally they trust you. And then with that goes with uh, the skill of persuasion. So if you're looking into someone's eyes, you're likely more persuasive in your arguments. You're more so I guess if you're a salesperson, that would be a good thing. But in general, if you want to convey your needs and desires more effectively, you'll be more persuasive if you make eye contact. Uh, let me come back to that peg I said, put a peg in that one. The trustworthiness peg. Um, so con artists are really good at making the right amount of eye contact and coming across as obviously trustworthy and uh, believable. Hence, they're successful con artists. So we need to be careful. Eye contact should not be the only criteria for establishing trust and rapport. You need to look at other things as well. Uh, body language, uh, previous record, reviews, I don't know, <laughs> just get more information, um, the experienced antisocial con artist type is very good at and very convincing, um, they make the right amount of eye contact. Which leads me to explain what is the right amount of eye contact. Uh, we intuitively know what's the right amount of eye contact. Like if you're just staring at somebody, after a while it becomes uncomfortable and they're like, okay, why are you staring at me? On the other hand, if you're constantly shifting your eyes back and forth and you're not really um, making enough eye contact, they also feel like, all right, are you paying attention to me? What's going on? Are you nervous? What's happening? So a little factoid here. Um, I'm certified as a facial action coding system. In other words, facial expressions reader. Uh, it's a real thing, just so you know. I did some research on emotional expression and suppression. So I ended up spending, I don't know, hundreds and thousands of hours reading faces. And so eyes are very telling. Looking at someone's eyes, you can say whether they're happy, sad, depressed, angry. You can read the emotions in their eyes and what's happening around the eyes. So one of the reasons people may avert their eyes is A, because they're not interested in what's hap what, what you have to offer. They're not with you. They're basically not with you. Um, they might be distracted by somebody else. They might be ashamed so what does that look like um what happens when someone averts their eyes from yours let's say you're telling a story and you're into your story and the person is looking at you you're making that eye contact and suddenly their eyes trail off and now they're looking at the tv or at somebody walking by what happens to you in that moment it's like suddenly your story just kind of dead ends like you can't comfortably finish your story and, and maybe you also turn your head and you try to follow their eyes wherever they're looking at so it breaks the connection between the two people um, we know instinctively that we turn our eyes away from things we don't like things we're not interested in things that are disgusting things that are dangerous often we turn our eyes away so like if there's like a a big mess in front of you and you're about to gag you can turn your eyes away right um if you're not interested in someone who's trying to catch your attention you're just going to be keep looking for the door or for the exit or for something else even if you're trying to be polite and try to entertain their engagement but you're not interested in them you're not interested in what they have to say your eyes will look away probably more frequently than you're even aware because you're trying to break the connection because you don't want to spend time with this person you don't want to entertain what they're saying so you're going to be looking away when you're ashamed when people are ashamed they frequently look down that's the look of shame 
and they can look down to the side, down in the center, it doesn't matter, but they will look down. They literally cannot look at you in the eyes. That's normal people, that's honest people, that's not con artists, psychopaths, narcissists, those guys are really manipulative. I shouldn't say guys, could could be girls. They're usually guys, but sometimes they're girls. So that type of person um, will be able to look at you in the eye. But a normal person that is ashamed for whatever reason, you may or may not know the reason, you may or may not be the reason, it may have nothing to do with the conversation, but if you trigger something with this other person and the reaction is shame, they're likely to look down. They will break eye contact because they are ashamed. They cannot connect with you. They're trying to disconnect. Again, subconsciously, intuitively, this is all just learned behavior that we're not even aware that we are doing. Um... So we can then say that even not making eye contact is informative <laughs> in a way. <laughs> Why is the person not making eye contact? So I'm trying to engage with this person and they're looking away. Are they not interested in what I have to say? Am I too much in their face? Um, and, you know, am I overstepping some boundaries or they just don't like me? You know, there's information in there. They're too busy. Are they in a hurry to go somewhere else? So if you are mindful and cognizant of the fact that somebody's looking away from you, it's a good opportunity to like say, hey, I see you're a little distracted. Um, is this not a good time for us to be talking? Should we talk another time? Um, you know, information, right? But that connection that we build through oxytocin and through learned behavior since we're basically babies is very primal. And relying on those instincts, we um, judge people or we perceive people as trustworthy or not trustworthy. We establish rapport with them, so on and so forth. So if you are not the kind of person that likes to make eye contact it behooves you to learn <laughs> the skill if you miss the first 10 months of your life <laughs> i don't know how to say that another way if you like this video give me the thumbs up if you learned something please subscribe more videos coming your way um and i really appreciate your time